In the 1980s, McDonald's came to Denmark, but the unions wanted the workers to boycott them. McDonald's came to Denmark in the 80s, but the union said to boycott all men and ladies. They don't want to serve no fries without a contract. Not any chicken nuggets or even one Big Mac in Denmark. McDonald's came to Denmark. Now they're here to stay. Okay, so I actually really like that song, but all I know about this topic of Denmark and McDonald's is that American pundits and politicians are always talking about how McDonald's employees in Denmark are paid $22 an hour, they get their six weeks of vacation, and they're paid maternity leave and safer and better working conditions. Now, I know most of that is actually due to Denmark's social welfare system and the, the labor laws that are already on the book. So why did McDonald's have to face a boycott from Denmark and all of the Danes in order to make this happen? Well, that's the thing. It wasn't as easy as it seems, and not all of these things are actually rooted in Danish labor law. So McDonald's had a lot of room to exploit the rules and different things here in Denmark when they first arrived. Okay, that's interesting. And when did they actually come to Denmark? So the story begins, let's go way on back, to 1981. So in the US, Ronald Reagan was just inaugurated. In the theaters, it was Raiders of the Lost Ark that everyone was watching. And that's when McDonald's decided, as they were rapidly expanding around the world, it was time for them to come to Denmark. They were already in 20 countries at this time, and this little Nordic country was next on the list. Until this point in this global expansion, they had McDonald's actually avoided unions in every country except Sweden. So they figured they could do the same once they got here. Ah, okay. So I think I see where this is heading. It's probably going to be a massive showdown over workers' rights. I'd say that's a polite way to look at it. <laughs> okay, I can just imagine. But there's a little more before we get into this and get into the whole story that we have here. So when McDonald's first arrived in Denmark, they found a labor market that was governed, just as it is right now, by sectoral labor agreements or union contracts. So these contracts determine the wages and conditions and other factors that go in for workers that are in this sector. Okay, so every sector has basically their own contract. So there's a teacher's union, police union, taxi driver's union, every different sector of the economy has their own contract. Mm -hmm. So I assume McDonald's workers then expected that when they were hired, they would be covered under the Danish Restaurant Workers Union. Close enough. Actually, it's the hotel and restaurant union agreement okay. that ideally McDonald's should have adhered to when they came to Denmark. And that honestly would be the norm. In fact, when other fast food companies like Burger King came into Denmark, that's what they did. And they came into Denmark a few years before McDonald's tried breaking in. Okay, well, I caught that you said they should have done this. So I assume this is where things start to unravel slash get interesting. <laughs> You'd be right in that assumption. So yes, they should have followed that agreement per kind of the norms of the times and even now. But again, union agreements like this aren't binding on employers the same way that say a contract is when it's signed between a specific union and a specific business. So that means that you can't just sue a company because they're not following these different agreements. It's voluntary. So McDonald's came in and decided that they're not going to follow the union agreement and decided to set up their own pay levels and work rules based on what they thought was fair. Okay, so what I know of Denmark is that seems like a huge mistake. I definitely would not want to be on the wrong side and cross <laughs> the Danish labor movement. Um, it, I'm assuming must not have taken very long for some kind of retaliation from the hotel and restaurant union in Denmark. Yeah, not only did it not take that long, it was only a few months and things were getting kicked up. In fact, in 1982, there was a full court press to get McDonald's to follow the hotel and restaurant workers agreement things actually move pretty slowly at first. I mean, McDonald's came in and they claimed that they had a very principled and unique position against unions. This is how they operated everywhere in the world. And so they said that negotiations weren't fair for them they were, and they were not gonna be able to do this. So in retaliation, they were beat up and dragged around the Danish press. But again, like many American organizations, they refused to yield. In fact, it took some years. And in 1988, the unions finally had enough. All right, this is actually what I was excited for, the drama. Oh yes, there's drama here. And what it came in the form of are sympathy strikes. Okay. So what this meant was that there's adjacent industries that decided to band together and cripple McDonald's business and operations. Okay. In fact, 16 different Danish unions joined these sympathy strikes. 
So what did this look like? So for example, Danish printers decided they would refuse to supply printed materials to all McDonald's restaurants. Okay, so therefore no bags, no menus, no cups, no napkins, all of the paper products that are branded at McDonald's, gone. And similarly, Danish dock workers refused to unload shipping containers that held McDonald's equipment. Okay. Union construction workers refused to do any work in or in new McDonald's locations, improvements they were doing. And in fact, they were in the process of building a new restaurant and that was stopped because the construction workers union decided that they didn't want to continue. Savage. Yes, and even more unions get in on the action. I mean, the typographers union refused to place McDonald's advertisements in publications and print ads. I mean, overnight, the company's entire print media operations just up and disappeared. Danish truckers stopped moving goods around Denmark for them, just like the dock workers did. So suddenly, food and beverages and materials just couldn't show up at the different stores. I mean, I think you get it by now. All these unions that could hurt McDonald's in some way by refusing to work for them did just that, to try to force them to take action and go into, agree the, the, go into the agreement as they're supposed to. Wow, that must have been really bad for McDonald's. No advertising, supply chain crippled, even building and opening a new restaurant must have been almost impossible at that point. I mean, it was just about impossible for McDonald's to operate. Think about it. So you'd have a McDonald's like this, and in front of there would be people picketing with signs, handing out leaflets, trying to convince people to go eat elsewhere. The unions organized a big PR campaign in the media, in newspapers, doing everything they could to convince people not to eat at McDonald's unless McDonald's chose to join in with the same standards as every other restaurant in the country. Wow. And in a country like Denmark, where most people are in a union and value fairness and trust, that must have been a lot of trouble for McDonald's. Pretty much, and McDonald's found themselves at a crossroads. I mean, at this point, the sympathy strikes and the consumer boycotts had crippled their supply chain. It had stopped any construction and had tarnished the brand. By 1989, McDonald's finally came to their senses. They realized they had to be a part of the hotel and restaurant union agreement, and that's when they decided to actually play fair here in Denmark. Okay, so I'm piecing this together, and it seems like when U.S. politicians point to Danish workers at McDonald's making more than their American counterparts, it's a little bit misleading. They're really leaving out the main fact that it wasn't always the case, and it only is today because of this boycott. Yeah, and on top of that, they leave out some other factors that I think are relevant here. The McDonald's model in Denmark is one that certainly does pay a higher wage in the U.S., but the flip side of that is that now there's fewer workers on each shift, as a lot of the manual labor has been replaced by machines that are able to take orders or other automation that prepares food or moves them around the restaurants. So they can lower their overall labor costs without cutting the wages of the McDonald's employees. I mean, this is all completely legal as they run their business. True, and I know that Americans often bring up this McDonald's uh, in Denmark example when they discuss raising the minimum wage in America, but McDonald's doesn't pay their Danish work for doesn't pay their Danish workforce more because of a higher minimum wage. And that's kind of what the left in America wants you to think. Um, and the right wants you to think that it's because the Danish government stepped in and told the businesses how much to pay you. But that's also not the case. In fact, there, there isn't even a minimum wage in Denmark, which I think is lost on a lot of Americans and even some Danes. Um, most of Denmark doesn't even want one. Danish McDonald's restaurants pay high wages because of this. Back in the 1980s, Danish labor unions turned their entire business off with the flip of a switch. And they don't want to mess around and see if Danes would do the same thing again if they suddenly decided to not comply with those Danish labor contracts. Yeah, for sure. In my opinion, there's probably two lessons that you can have with this. I mean, number one, you can definitely make money in Denmark. It's a very capitalist country. And you do this while adhering to worker-friendly labor laws and union contracts. These are designed to dictate a livable wage and reasonable conditions for their workers. That's how it works here in Denmark. And McDonald's has actually been doing this since the late 1980s, and I'm sure they'll continue to do this as they learn what happens when, when things go wrong, because number two, don't mess with the Danes. Yeah, <laughs> they're definitely not to be messed with. And if you want to see more reasons why you shouldn't mess with the Danes, you can watch this video right here. It talks about five other examples in history when people learned the hard way, just like McDonald's, not to mess with the Danes. So enjoy this video. Thanks for watching, guys. Hi, hi. hi.